Hi everybody. Today I have a new plugin for you and I have a new camera. Thanks to all my supporters on Patreon who made this possible. So the plugin today is about a synthesizer and let me try this with the remote control. It's about this synthesizer. This is the um, Cork Poly 800 and there's a special story about me and this Poly 800 synthesizer. And this begins with a record, which we can see here. And this record was played by one of my favorite bands when I was young. And that featured a lot of cool synthesizer sounds I really loved. And on the record cover we can see that there's a Moog Prodigy. And during that time I of course had a band and we played a similar style of music. So I desperately wanted to have a synthesizer. I didn't know much about synthesizers when I was so young, but I tried to buy a synthesizer second hand and the only thing I could afford was the Poly 800. So I bought that Poly 800, but I wasn't aware that this is a completely different thing than the Prodigy was, because the Prodigy synthesizer is a mono synth, which would have disappointed me at that time, because um, I wanted to play chords and um, the Prodigy couldn't save sounds and um, this keyboard can save uh, 32 sounds. Um, but let me show you this in a picture. I tried to get that right. So we see um, I was very young here. I am playing the synthesizer and I'm sitting behind this organ and synthesizer stack. And you can see the synthesizer here. And of course, this synthesizer couldn't do any of the sounds you could do with a Moog Prodigy, but um, what I didn't know is vice versa. So um, this is a very special synthesizer. It was made in 1983 and it was the first synthesizer that you could buy for less than a thousand dollars. And for that time it had some great features. So um, you could store sounds digitally into that unit, but it was an analog synthesizer. So we have analog but digitally controlled synthesizer. And as I just said, it is a polyphonic synthesizer. So great for that time. And it could do MIDI. And this is a special thing because MIDI just came out right before the development of this instrument. But yes, of course, there are a lot of downsides to this instrument too, because they developed it to make it cheap. So the first thing that us always said is that it's not really a polyphonic synthesizer. Well, it is a polyphonic synthesizer. You can play more than one note at a time. So that makes it polyphonic, but it has just one filter. So everything you play runs through one filter, while real polyphonic synthesizers have a filter for each note. But of course, that saves money building in just one filter. So now let's have a look at this thing and then have a look at the plugin. That's how the instrument looks like. And of course, we have the things we need to play the instrument, which are obviously the keys. And we have this joystick over here, which can do pitch bend. And it also does the modulation for the oscillators in this direction. And if I pull that, I get the modulation for the filter. These elements over here are just the volume knob and the basic tune and the pitch bend amount for this joystick and a little sequencer. So in opposite to other analog synthesizers, we don't have all these little controls for everything because during the beginning of the 80s they thought it would be nice to have a clean surface and everything looks digital and modern. And this already is one thing that made this unit special, because it's an analog synthesizer where everything is controlled digitally. And this also made it possible to store the presets. In this case you can store 32 presets and you can even export the 32 presets as a bank to an analog tape machine. Well, and of course, you could load these sound banks again from the tapes. Well, luckily, we're living in modern times, but that's how it went.
So now, if you want to program a sound, it goes like this. 11 is the sound that I selected, and I hit program. And now the second number indicates the parameter, and the third number is the setting for this parameter. And in order to know what we're doing, we have the parameter list here on the right side. So let's go briefly over the features. And don't worry, it won't be a waste of time, because you will find all this in the plugin. It's maybe a bit small in the video picture, but here we have the parameters for the so-called DCO1. This is the oscillator number one, and it's called DCO because it's digitally controlled oscillator one. And then we have another oscillator, oscillator two, of course, and each of these oscillators has a so-called DEG, which is the digitally controlled envelope generator. Then we have this DEG number three, which is the envelope generator for the filter and the noise, which brings me to here, which says we have a noise and we have filter settings. Then we have parameters for the MG, the modulation generator. And of course, on all the other instruments, that's called LFO, the low frequency oscillator. And we have one parameter here where we can turn on and off a chorus effect. But now it gets interesting. We have these parameters for 16 foot, 8 foot, 4 foot and 2 foot, which means we can switch on and off several octaves for one oscillator. Let's do that. I call parameter 13. And when I now set this to off, I have no sound. When I enable 14, that's the octave. And of course, 15 is two octaves and 16 is three octaves. And the trick is now that we can enable combinations which we like, like 14 and 16. And this stacking of octaves is one of the main reasons for the unique sound of this instrument. Okay, enough about this thing. Now let's have a look at the plugin. This eventually is the plugin and it's called Tukan Studios Poly 24. And I tried to, in a way, copy the usability of the original unit, but not make it too complicated with that number field and all that stuff. But the parameters are arranged in the same way as the parameter list on the original keyboard is. And you can change the parameters by just dragging the numbers. You can also use the mouse wheel for changing the values. So let's see from left to right, we have the first oscillator where we have the basic octave and we can choose the waveform. Here we have this 16, 8, 4 and 2, what we just saw in the video part with the synthesizer. And of course we have the level for this oscillator. Below that we have the envelope generator for this oscillator, which has attack, decay, breakpoint, slope, sustain and release, which you might already know from the December synth, which I released in December. Oscillator number two has the same features, has its own envelope generator, and it can be detuned in an interval, and it also can be detuned in a fine tune. Then here we have the noise generator, but now let's get more to the interesting part of this synthesizer, and this is the filter. Because besides this organ style oscillator configuration, the filter is the other big reason for the unique sound of this unit. And for showing you the filter, let me turn on maybe this four and two foot. So we can change the filter frequency here. And we can give it a resonance. And then we have this keyboard track mode, which means when it's zero or off, the filter is a static filter, which is set to a constant frequency. And when I now set this to two, the filter frequency shifts depending on the key I press. Let me show you this. Let's put that filter lower. When I play a low note, it is filtered. And when I play a higher note, it is filtered the same way. So the sound character doesn't shift. I can also set this to half. So the sound character will shift, but not as much as it will in two, but it will shift more than off because off will not shift in any way. Let's again put this to two, because now there's something more to say about that, because we only have one filter for all the audio. 
which now seems to be a problem if I want to keyboard track the filter frequency and I press two keys, what will happen? So I play a lower note and then a higher note. And you could hear the lower note sets the filter very low and the higher note sets the frequency up and the frequency stays where it's put last. And of course, this goes the other way around too. So I play a higher note. And the trigger from the lower key will set the filter lower. And of course, for the filter, we have an envelope generator. It's now set to zero all the way. So let's give it an attack and maybe a bit more and a decay, a higher breakpoint, a slope, a sustain level and a release level. So we now would have a filter sweep, but it will only sweep if we put this envelope generator to the cutoff of the filter. So we need this envelope generator intensity to set up. Maybe for demonstration we need more resonance. And now in this VCF section we have two controls left and this is the um, envelope generator polarity which is now set to 2 which means positive. We can set that to negative so the filter will not open in the attack phase. No, it will close in the attack phase. Let's hear that. Also a feature that you won't find on every synthesizer. But let's set that to 2 again. And let's see this re-trigger thing, which now is on. And this means every time you press a key, this envelope generator will restart. Let's hear that. And if we set that to off, the envelope generator will not restart. Well, okay, here we have the chorus. This, of course, is the output volume. And we have the LFO section, which is called MG Modulation Generator, which can have a frequency and it can have an initial delay. So it waits from the time you press the key until it really starts modulating. Let's modulate this filter. And that now is already all the features we have in the keyboard. But you know me, I wouldn't be me if I wouldn't put in some more specials. Let's this time go from right to left. So we can tempo sync the modulation generator. As we have seen this in many other plugins. Here we can set up the pitch range, the pitch wheel does. And here we have a kind of a cheat mode. So this is the filter mode, which is classic, the keyboard style, one filter for all. But you can change this to one filter per voice. And this now turns it from a paraphonic to a real polyphonic synthesizer. Let's see that. Okay, next we have another cheat mode. The keyboard is poly all the time. But here we can set this to a mono mode where we can set up a glide time. And because most of the MIDI keyboards that we have in our studios don't have the joystick thing there, we can choose what the mod wheel does. Does it the filter modulation, the modulation for the DCO, or is it in the style of the keyboard a bidirectional control? The next feature is the so-called sync feature, which we already saw in the MOOC Prodigy video. And also the December synth has this sync feature. And I don't want to talk too long. If you don't know what that is, you can watch that in the other videos or just Google synthesizer sync. Because now I want to come to another topic, which is the DCO mode, which I find very funny. So let me put this here and maybe open an oscilloscope. And now do some basic settings here. Okay, no, now I set up a very simple sound and I set this to the expect mode. So now the oscillator does what we would expect. We selected a sawtooth wave and what we would expect to see in the oscilloscope is this. 
That's what we call a sawtooth wave. And if I now play a higher note, we will still see a sawtooth wave with a shorter wavelength. So far so good, that's how we know it. But during the development of this thing, I wondered why does nothing sound as the keyboard? And this is because the keyboard does a completely different thing. Let's switch to reality and press the same key. And this is not a sawtooth wave, this is an alternating sawtooth wave. Let's again compare sawtooth, alternating. Well, okay, let's go to the expect alternating. So now we would expect to see an alternating sawtooth wave with a shorter wavelength on a higher note. But this is not what the keyboard does. Let's go to reality. And you see, on the higher note, it will not drop completely to the zero line. And, and the higher the key that I play, the stranger it gets. And below that C, it will get even worse. But that's what the keyboard actually does. And this again is one thing of saving production costs, because it's not really an oscillator that changes its frequency, it's an oscillator that is reset or synced, depending to the key you play, but it plays with the same frequency all the time. But don't worry, it can even get worse if I switch to the square wave. What we would expect to see would be this. And what it does is this. And this also is an alternating sawtooth wave. And they did that because if I now enable these um, octaves, it will sound a bit like a square wave. <clears throat> and this will sound a bit like a sawtooth wave, but it isn't. And now some final words about this plugin. As I just explained in this DCO mode example, it was not easy to reproduce this synthesizer because they did so many strange things to get the production costs cheap, which were very hard to reproduce. And I recalibrated these um, envelope generators all the time until I recognized that the original keyboard has different times every day. And also it's out of tune every day, you have to tune it again and sometimes the pitch band works and sometimes it just works in one direction. And this is not because the unit is broken. These Poly 800s have been like that all the time. Well, it was a budget instrument. But here's still some good news. It comes delivered with a bunch of presets. And these actually can make some good sounds, like Sweet Dreams. So it comes delivered with the presets that were in my keyboard. And I even made some more, like a sync lead sound. Something you couldn't expect from the original keyboard. Or an accordion. Okay, that was fun. That's all for now. I hope you have fun with the plugins and bye bye.